A while back, when I was in Costa Rica on vacation, I met these YouTube girls who basically traveled around the world. They were fucking wild, to say the least. This one girl was a flight attendant, let's call her Kate. Kate constantly hyped me up about traveling. One night we were on the beach with the surf boys, telling wild stories. Kate goes, well, I have the wildest. Bitch, nothing prepared me for that fucking roller coaster Kate took us on. Kate proceeded to tell us that there's this underworld of sex traveling where, if you're lucky, some rich guy will invite you on an all-expense-paid trip. Just because he can. Sometimes full-on sex is involved and sometimes not so much. She said she had been on a private flight from Canada to France and one of the dudes took a liking to her. He invited her to Dubai right there on the spot. She had to be careful taking his info because she could lose her job for fraternizing. But they exchanged numbers anyway. She said he took her out a couple of times in France and was the perfect gentleman. He opened doors for her, paid for everything, and whatnot. Once, in the heat of the moment, she kissed him but was taken aback like he wasn't expecting that. She was afraid he'd cancel the earlier invite to Dubai but he didn't. Mind you this man is super cute supposedly, and she was clearly into him too. Though their time together was brief, she had to go back to Canada and him to LA but with the plans for their rendezvous in Dubai. Back home, she had to tell her boyfriend that she had a small gig over in Dubai, and he was like no problem. What an understanding boyfriend. So she booked the flight and flew to Dubai where she said he had set her up in an amazing room with a view and would later meet up with the gentleman after they both got some rest. Later that evening, they had dinner then shockingly, he took her back to the hotel and left. This made her wonder what the fuck was wrong with this man, if she only knew. The next morning, he texts her and says get ready, dress classy, you have an hour. Cool. So she gets ready and a Mercedes comes to pick her up. It's a long ass ride but oh well. When she finally arrives at her destination, she was warmly welcomed to a beautiful big ass mansion with literally no neighbors for miles. She walked into the mansion to find a bunch of older dudes smiling about with each other and other girls who seemed right about her age. She's starting to get the idea. It's a bunny ranch. She still doesn't see an issue. Her host greets her and shows her around a bit. Then asks her to go enjoy herself. She talked with the girls and some were really nice but a few of them were really nervous. She just chalks it up to them being newbies. LOL, they were not. She also noticed the men weren't drinking even though there was a lot of alcohol present. Most of them were just having coffee. At some point in the evening, they all sat down to dinner and she said she'd never eaten that good before. After dinner, they played games and everyone slowly drifted off to bed. She tried to follow her host but he said no, her room was on the other side of the mansion. Weird. So, she passes out and at about 2.30 am there's a soft knock on the door. One of the attendants has come to get her for the games. Games? At 2.30. She puts on some sweats, and was escorted to the living area. Where there had been furniture just hours before was now empty except for buckets and sex toys. The other girls were already there and waiting around too. Some were confused and the nervous girls were now shaking. The men came in and the girls were instructed to strip. Hesitantly, they all did. She watched in horror as a jovial, Fat German man walked over to a bucket, dropped his pants and took a shit standing over it. He pulled his pants up and walked over to one of the girls and hand fed her his shit. He literally dipped his hand in the bucket, scooped shit and told the girl to open wide for him to to put it in her mouth. He looked at her expectantly and she started chewing. So, at this point Kate is contemplating to leave but her host lets her know she is stuck there. They took her phone and there were no cars and no one for miles. He tells her if she wanted to opt out, she'd have to find her own way out and miss out on the money. Money. 
What money? He proceeded to explain the game. As he does, she looks around and saw the men smiling and the girls, well, were calculating how much they can take. 50k. Last the weekend and you get 50k each. At this point, the girl chewing starts gagging. The man with the bucket holds it out and she pukes into it. He grins wide and moves to the next girl as if challenging her. Tears in her eyes, she opens her mouth. This was only the beginning. One girl had the contents of the bucket stuffed up her ass. Kate said she ate a solid piece of shit as others were ordered to slide across the floor on their stomach while licking up shit. At some point, girls lined up for a human centipede, if you know what that is, all while actual sex and partner swapping was taking place. She said the men would frequently pop laxatives like Molly so that they had a free flow of shit the entire weekend. The girls had to sleep in the filth and it felt like the only reason they fed them was so that they'd vomit and increase the nastiness. After having their fill, the men would go back to their rooms to shower, sleep and whatever. Several girls opted out and were allowed to leave but got paid nothing. Those who made it to the final night, were sprayed down with the rest of the filth and retired to their rooms. The next morning, they were summoned to breakfast and the men ate and drank and joked like nothing happened all weekend. Each girl collected her cash, and was allowed to leave. She said, as she was getting into her car, this sick man, the host had the audacity to say, hope to see you at the next one. When Kate got back to Canada, she took a work sabbatical and underwent intense therapy because the sight of anything brown and creamy would trigger her. She didn't tell her boyfriend about it until a year later and he promised not to tell anyone what she did. But he couldn't be with her. He said he was keeping the car though, it was the least she could do after putting him through all that. She found it fair and let him keep it. When she was done telling her story, the air was still. The silence was deafening and everyone, was in ducking shock wondering why would anyone ever tell that story. Days later, to my surprise I met her while she was planning another sex travel. It seemed like she hadn't learned her lesson, but she did say, she refuses to meet with the men anywhere other than the hotel bar or restaurant and always has backup when they go to the rooms. Whatever that means, I never spoke to or saw her again after that. I hope to see her one day though, for more juicy stories.